Hi everyone, my name is Gus Alem. I'm a PhD candidate from Christchurch, New Zealand. And I'm here to talk to you about some of my PhD research, which is a framework called Life Publication, where Life Publication is trying to enable the collection and integration of automated computational pipelines with research outputs, thereby generating live representations of our research on an ongoing basis. So first I thought I would provide a general overview of some of the goals of a system like Life Publication. Generally, we see a trend of increasing dependence of computational tools and born digital research within different fields. This has encouraged a lot of the conversation around reproducibility, reuse and transparency with workflow management tools. Um, and these tools have sort of been designed ad hoc by different communities over the years. Recently, there's been progress on providing sort of general frameworks for workflow descriptions and provenance recording, and we're leveraging some of that work in this project. Our current publication methods are often disjoint, providing external repos for code, results, data, and often don't integrate these components in a compelling way. So this leads to a sort of fragmentation of the scientific rec record and papers that can't represent the current state of the research, e.g. They, they go out of date. So breaking down live publications, motivations and goals, we have this idea of liveness where we want to enable papers to keep themselves up to date. Transparency and explainability are sort of two sides of the same coin, meaning enhancing the content of live publication automatically through the inclusion of provenance information and other uh, data within our data model. Distributed and collaborative speak to the research communities that we're supporting, where the use of distributed or federated computers are common, and multiple researchers often work on and monitor flow executions, and uh, having different roles for different people, so people who are able to re-engage a flow after something happens or an event occurs, versus others who can just view the flow. Finally, we want to embrace being lazy, uh, that is that we'd prefer if the research articles wrote themselves. So here is just a bird's eye view of the framework. You can see it consists of an infrastructure and hardware layer, which is usually uh, abstracted away by the workflow management systems for an end user. The workflow orchestration layer, which we highlight here as it's responsible for generating our provenance records for each flow execution. And also the programmatic article layer, where programmatic articles are effectively templates applied to our data model, resulting in a version to paper. There are two containerizations actually represented here. There's sort of the provenance containerization, which we include within our data model, and then the data model itself, which is the live publication containerization. But the provenance container is actually quite important, as we'll talk about uh, in a bit. So here are our current technologies behind our experimental infrastructure stack. Uh, we're using Nectar for our cloud compute and Globus Flows as our distributed workflow management system. Aurocrate, which is a specification for wrapping up and describing digital research objects using JSON-LD, is responsible for encoding provenance information and the live publication container itself. Finally, Stencilla acts as the article stencil, providing a version to paper predicated on the live publication data. Interoperability of components was an important aspect in the configuration and development of live publication, and we found that having well-defined crate specifications allows the exchanging of workflow management systems to any which have compatible provenance recording mechanisms, such as CWL. Stencilla is our current experimental programmatic language, te language technology, but for the uh, examples in this presentation, we're using Quarto. Live publication is strongly predicated on automated workflow management systems for continuing re-execution of the computational pipeline. In order to represent each of these executions of the pipeline, we use provenance recording standards and integrations. So provenance allows us to access uh, primary and intermediate data results, performance metrics, and general metadata regarding a flow's execution, all of which is information that may be accessed at the article layer and used in decision trees or included as content. Often the type of information that we record is important um, as from a publication perspective, uh, what researchers want to record may change depending on the scientific domain. Additionally, we have this challenge of potentially disjoint distributed workflow executions and how we can piece together a complete provenance record from a diverse and disjoint interface. So the provenance model that we're working with is the provenance run crate, which is a part of the workflow run crates from the Arrow crate community. It was released near the end of 2023, and it divides provenance between prospective and retrospective provenance graphs, or entity graphs, where the prospective is the execution plan, which may be used for reuse and things like that, and the retrospective is the what happened. So uh, during this instance of the flow, what were the results, and how do they relate to the prospective graph? What we wanted to do is first identify what parts or what entities within this graph relate to a single step execution, and this is the subgraph I've outlined here. And I'll just click to the next slide, which provides uh, this subgraph without any of the extra context. 
So this subgraph represents a single step within the province run crate, which brings us closer to the representation that needs to be fulfilled during the execution of a distributed step within the workflow. Each step has a control action entity which describes the behavior of the step, for example, uh, scattering in CWL or some other parallel behavior. The create action entity describes the actual execution of the tool associated with that step. You can see that it references some predefined tool in the perspective graph. And finally, uh, the tool that generates uh, some outputs during its execution, represented down here as the file of property value entity. Given the step definition, we make some modifications for the distributed context. Towards providing a standard interface for distributed steps, we have defined the distributed step crate, which is a standalone structure used to collect provenance information from the source of compute and then reincorporate back into a provenance run crate specification. So here you see a few additions. First, a media subscription entity and its children, which models the subscription requirements for executing tasks on certain nodes. This enables us to check a user against a set of required subscription scopes when re-executing the flow definition. Next is the inclusion of a how-to step entity which stores identification information which is used when aligning a set of distributed step crates with the final provenance run crate. To do so, we assume some stateful information regarding the flow execution is returned by the workflow management service. We call this the workflow execution description. We then cross-reference this description with a how-to step property of position to determine its position when creating the provenance run crate. Finally, we include new types that sit outside of schema.org, hardware runtime, and hardware component, both of which are designed to model the hardware components used by the distributed machine, and then we relate each hardware component to one or many observations regarding its performance, allowing us to give a more granular performance monitoring for each uh, executed step. So here we see the provenance run crate specification with our specialization for distribu distributed provenance recording. You'll note that not all of the distributed step crate profile entities are included here as some are removed uh, once the provenance crate is created, for example the distributed step crate's how to step. Uh, the result of this is an extension to the provenance run crate specification which addresses some of the challenges of provenance recording within distributed and federated environments and we use this uh, when building our live publications. Publications and scientific articles often discuss scientific projects rather than single workflows. When we go to create a live publication, the data model we're using needs to be flexible enough to represent multiple provenance records, as well as possibly non-computational workflow accounts. To do so, we use simple linking systems, where an orchestration crate may define many subcrate structures, that is workflow provenance records in this case, but may not contain itself another orchestration crate. Each subcrate is referenced through a direct link to its manifest file, where each child crate must include an IRO crate within its type field. In this way, an orchestration crate may contain its own data and contextual entities to describe it as a scientific project alongside containerized IRO crates. This is expanded upon in a few ways. For example, including position relationships between subcrates can represent the order of execution or ordered versions of the same flow in the case of longitudinal studies. There is also some interesting ideas around daisy chaining multiple disjoint workflow management systems together. Uh, as they are encoded in provenance records to get it into a meta workflow system which could open up um, some interesting opportunities where we're mixing domain specific workflow tools with data transfer workflow tools such as Globus. So here we come to an example implementation of the orchestration crate and the specialized provenance run crate. For this example I have integrated provenance recording with Globus flows for use in live application but as mentioned before the workflow management system is interoperable just dependent on provenance recording so Globus Flows is usually a data management service, but it can also be used as a computational workflow manager through its action providers and Globus Compute tooling. Each Globus Flow consists of a set of steps defined in the Amazon States language. In our case, that's usually a transfer to compute node, an execution of that compute node, and then a transfer back to a data store. <clears throat> the goal of this integration was to provide two options to users, a live application action provider uh, framework and a live application compute node, both of which can be leveraged as steps within a Globus flow, and then once that flow is completed, produce a provenance run crate from that execution. Action providers are data-driven. That is, users do not provide the script or tool that's executed on their data, just the data itself. In this way, they're well suited for virtual laboratory applications where tools are exposed for others to use. We define a custom action provider which services incoming compute requests with a Docker container. The execution of this container is wrapped with a custom Python wrapper which encodes information before, during, and after the tool's execution, populating the distributed step crate. This is then automatically sent back to the orchestration server 
the server from which the flow was executed um, itself. The Globus Compute node is a more flexible tool which uses either send a Python function or combination of data and a Python function to be executed. Each incoming job starts the process of building a distributed step crate. By parsing each function with the tree setter library, we can extract read and writes to disk and automatically encode inputs and outputs to the step. This interface provides more flexibility than an action provider approach as a centralized way of supporting many possible function definitions while also providing a way to retain the function definitions at the orchestration server, meaning that the provenance graph may be more fully populated before we execute the flow. The Globus Compute node integration is still in development, so the rest of these examples use the Life Application Action Provider framework. To demonstrate how these systems work together, I'll quickly go over an example case study that we developed that compared language identification models and their accuracy. Here we have the Globus Flow execution, which incorporates uh, three Life Application Action Provider steps. The first two being nodes that are executed on some uh, input data with some model, and the third being a comparative statistics node. These three steps, when executed, produce their distributed step crates, represented as uh, artifacts here, which are kicked back to the orchestration server. Before the flow executed, the orchestration server encoded the prospective and sort of non-distributed step crate bound retrospective provenance entities. With the flow finished, it completes the provenance crate and wraps it within the orchestration crate. Now, given the orchestration crate, we come to the fun part. Uh, predicating a programmatic document on top of this data to uh, enable versioned publications. And here we have some of the ideas that we, we have for the space where we have programmatic narrative content, uh, author content and decision making, rule based content decisions and uh, of course our versioned publication outputs. Quarto is a similar tool to Jupyter Notebooks and other mixed writing systems allowing code chunks and natural language expressions within the same document. Here's a quick demonstration of how, by changing some data, we can affect change in text, whether through inclusion or exclusion criteria or delimited text, which change depending on the state of a variable. Quarto was our first choice for attempting the integrations with Live Application, but there were a few limitations. Dynamic markdown behaviors are enabled through code block evaluations, meaning that you literally have to be writing if of four blocks for what markdown is being exported depending on some variable. Uh, only observable JS has a global namespace, meaning when you're writing natural language text, you can only reference observable JS variables if they've been um, imported from a, a code block. And there is no underlying document model which can, we can use to perform more flexible changes to a document depending on the project's current state. Towards solving some of these issues, we're integrating with a technology framework called Stencilla, which is built from the ground up using a DAG model of a document where a document consists of a set of connected nodes, e.g. a parent-child relationship between sentences, paragraphs, sections, and so on. Stencilla also has this concept of programmatic documents built in, where nodes can have inclusion or ex exclusion criteria, as well as being able to iterate over data for a specific node. These features fit well within the concept of life application, where a document effectively becomes a state machine whose state is determined by the underlying data model. The integration with this is currently under development and should be ready around the same time as the Globus Compute integration. Here is a quick demonstration of an early version of Life Application where we manually trigger the compilation of a manuscript to a data model. Usually this happens automatically, but it's useful for demonstration purposes to slow it down. Here's the Globus platform where people collaborate and access the same flow execution, executing our Life Application action providers. This is more of a, a data pipeline as action providers expose a tool rather than a general compute interface. So now we wait for the distributed step crates to be uploaded to the orchestration server to generate the orchestration crate. Once that's done, we can select a manuscript version and preview a render of the publication. If we're happy with the render, we can push that version of the publication to GitHub, which is an early look at how Git version can be used with live applications. So to summarize, Life Publication is a framework which integrates computational pipelines, provenance, and workflow management systems with our publication outputs towards providing new ways to publish computationally bound research. Generally, we have used pre-existing eScience tools to meet our needs, providing a reasonably low barrier for entry for library presentations of Born Digital Research, and we're excited about the prospect of keeping research relevant and useful for longer. Personally, I love the idea of external users applying their data or methods to pre-existing life publications and having a compiled manuscript that describes the new results from the original author's perspective. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.